what's up you guys marty schwartz here with marty music and we got a really fun video today i've got my good buddy bobby huff who's an awesome producer engineer multi-instrumentalist and he's also got a killer youtube channel you guys got to check out down in that link down there and today i have him on my channel he is an absolute expert so uh, let's hear what he has to say ladies and gentlemen mr bobby huff Hey, thanks, Marty. Thanks for having me back. It's awesome to be here again. They're making me say this part. Okay, I've worked with Shine Down, Hailstorm, Papa Roach, Reba McIntyre, Leanne Rimes, Alice Cooper, Gene Simmons, Rocket to the Moon, uh, on and on and on and on. I also love to fish, I love cigars, and I love my family. Anyway, we're gonna get into audio interfaces a little bit more this time. Our last video, we talked about audio essentials, digital audio workstations, audio interfaces, uh, microphones, guitar, amp modeling, kind of uh, basic computers that you would need to run all of this. This week, we're gonna kind of hunker down and get hyper-focused on audio interfaces, what they do, what they mean, and how they get your guitar into here into your computer. All right, like I mentioned in our last video, the audio interface is a way to get the rest of the world into here, into your computer. You guitar players, quarter inch cable. This end goes into your guitar. The other end goes into your audio interface. That easy. This interface will hook into your computer by USB or Thunderbolt, any one of these normal cables that we know in real life that'll go into your computer your computer will recognize the sound card, you play through your sound card, and boom, your guitar is in your computer. That's how we make music these days in computers. So let's first talk about the inputs, just like your amp has an input. These are inputs to this box. There's two inputs. There's a quarter inch cable one in the middle here where we can plug our guitars into. So there's two different channels of inputs. There's also a ring around these where you could put an XLR cable for a mic input. So this box has two inputs. Now there are other boxes that are quite magical that look like this that could have up to 16 or 32 inputs. Now for the purposes of what we're doing here, we don't need that many inputs. Really, we just need one. If we put our guitar into here and we have a virtual amp going, if we wanna have two microphones on your amp, an SM7 and maybe a ribbon mic, you could put two mics on your amp. Some of these boxes, these interfaces have multiple, multiple inputs. That's if you wanna record a whole entire drum set and a bass and maybe two mics on an acoustic guitar. Totally overkill for what we're doing. I'm just trying to educate you on what these devices do, what some do for huge, big recording sessions, but for what we need, we're gonna go quarter inch cable into here. The output section of these, how comes there's no output XLR or quarter inch cables? Well, there are quarter inch cables that go to your speakers. So you can hear what's going on in here in your room. Now the normal output, like you would see on other things, quarter inch or XLR or whatever, is all handled through the USB or the Thunderbolt cable. That goes into your computer and talks to your digital audio workstation, which we talked about last video. Digital audio workstation means fancy name for tape recorder editor. As far as all of your outputs, that's handled in the magic world of Thunderbolt and USB. Quarter inch cables here, out to your speakers, inputs, really make it super simple. Like I showed you in the last video, there is a volume here that goes to your speakers, turn your speakers up, bother your neighbors, turn it down, not so much. And all of these boxes have a headphone level. Get tinnitus early, avoid tinnitus turned down. That's what these boxes do. They take audio signals, analog signals, turn it into ones and zeros so your computer understands it and then spits it back out through the outputs into your speakers as an analog signal again. One more quick thing about audio interfaces. Make sure that if you get a USB 3 or a Thunderbolt or whatever audio interface, make sure that you have the identical input to your computer. You don't wanna get a Thunderbolt 
audio interface, and now have a Thunderbolt port on your computer. These will go with any digital audio workstation. They're all compatible. The one thing you need to do is go to the manufacturer's website and make sure that the box you want to buy is compatible with the operating system on your computer. Not the DAW, but like the Windows 10 or the Mac, whatever. Make sure those are compatible and you'll be just fine. Okay, so enough talk. I've got a quarter inch cable on my guitar. I'm gonna take the other end and I'm going to put it in the input of this Apollo audio interface. Audio interface, audio interface. We're just using this one because it's hooked up to this computer. This would be the same thing. So I'm all plugged in. Old man glasses, it'll happen to you. This is a virtual amp. Through this, I can control how much gain I'm running into this amp. As you can see, it's pretty hot here. So let me turn it down. I'm not clipping anymore. So that would be the appropriate level to run into the amp. So we've got a healthy signal going in. This is the software that's inside here that shows me my input levels and my uh, amp software. So let's go through some presets. It's super easy to just change presets and get a completely different sound. This is called Strat Heavy. Strat Heavy lead delay. It's got delay. Hear the feedback? Strat Cream Delay. Strat Metal. Paula Aggressive. I don't know what all this stuff means, but basically, we can go through here and get all kinds of different sounds. Now, if we don't want that amp head, we can go and find a different amp head. Let's go through a diesel. Ah, now we're in a diesel head. We've switched amps that quick. Okay, what kind of presets do we have here? Amazing. And obviously, there's effects racks inside here, all kinds of different um, amp configurations. Inside of a DAW, we could have all these different amps and we could use, but just because you buy one amp doesn't mean you've only bought one amp. It means inside the DAW, you can run as many of these different amps and these instances as powerful as your computer is. Next time, we'll show how you can run these amps inside of a DAW and create different tracks, different presets, put a bunch of different guitars together. But this episode is mainly to show you, like we've been talking about, let's get this through here into the computer and sound like a real guitar so we can start making music, start listening to yourself back, practicing, find your weak spots, find your strengths. Am I bending a little sharp? Am I bending a little flat? When I'm fretting, am I fretting out? All these kind of little nuances, stuff that Marty, I'm sure, has showed you on the channel. The more riffs that he plays, the more things that he shows you, licks and all that. Play them into your DAW and listen to yourself back and go, hey, am I, re am I really nailing this or am I just close? This is the next level detail really of any guitar player getting better is being able to listen to themselves back. It's always great for any singer, guitar player, drummer to listen back and really find that attention to detail. And that's what getting your guitar into a computer, listening to yourself back is really gonna do for you. All right, you guys, I'm almost out of Diet Coke and I gotta bounce, but let's go through this one more time. Here are the audio interfaces that I recommend, especially for you guitar players. Shredder, first timer, intermediate, whatever. This Focusrite box is awesome. It's got a guitar input. It's gonna sound great. It's not gonna color your tone. You get this into a computer, a virtual amp, you're gonna be great. This is only about 180 bucks. And trust me, you get this, you're gonna be totally happy. For the next level up, this is the Apollo, the same one we're using back here. Guitar input. Level for speakers, you change it to preamp, it's the level for your preamp, how much guitar you want going into your virtual amp. Super easy to understand and work. 
This one's USB. They make them in Thunderbolt. Like I said before, make sure you get one that's compatible with ever, whatever input you have on your computer, USB, Thunderbolt, or whatever. This is a great one. This is more about 1300 bucks, but it's really great. You could use this one forever. It sounds amazing. It does some more trickery inside running under other plugins on its own little mini computer, but also a fantastic option. We've shown you these two great options. There are other options out there. Some you can get for like a hundred bucks. Make sure they're compatible with your computer and your operating system and you'll be just fine. Okay, you guys, a great audio interface isn't gonna make you a better player. It's gonna make you a better practicer to be able to listen to back to what you're doing. Now, the important thing about choosing any gear is choose what you need. Choose something that's affordable to you that you know that's gonna work. Overkill is just overkill, man, and it's gonna kill your pocketbook. Don't do that. If you can afford this, great, do it. But this is gonna get you down the road and it's gonna be just fine. So don't overspend, don't overdo it. Hey, you guys, thanks for watching another one of my videos here on Marty's channel. If you wanna get a little bit deeper into recording or production, there's a link in the description below to my YouTube channel. And Marty, thanks again for having me on your channel. It's always a pleasure. I'll see you guitar players soon. Yo, Bobby, thank you so much, man, for that video. All that information was really great. I hope people get a lot out of it. I know it was informative for me. Uh, so hopefully you can do some more here at the channel. And also I'll just let my audience know if there's any uh, stuff you'd like to see in this category, please let Bobby and I both know in the comments below. And uh, thanks again, Bobby. Thanks again, everyone, for watching and hope to see you again real soon.